While walking home, looking at the beautiful engagement ring Kevin had given her, she smiled excited to arrive. However, as soon as she got home, her smile faded. She caught her mother and her husband in the act. Join this provocative tale now. And if you already know our channel and want to help us continue with more engaging content like this, leave your like. Let's go to the video. Kevin always took pride in being seen as a womanizer. And although some people scolded him, he continued with the same behavior, believing that everyone who criticized him was merely envious. With his burlesque manner, he frequently found himself in trouble. He got dressed, put on his best cologne, smiled at himself in the mirror, and then left the house. At the party, Kevin immediately went for a drink without eating anything. Some of the locals even warned him. One man said, at least have a bite, Kevin. Grab a bread with pate. It's delicious. He even pointed to the woman who had made the food. However, Kevin just said he'd eat later and kept drinking. A band was playing, the sound of pagoda filled the room. People were singing, dancing, and having a great time. As the night went on, everyone grew more anxious for the approaching new year. But Kevin was acting sluggishly. Then, with only one minute left until the new year, Kevin became convinced that someone had shoved him on purpose and started a fight, ruining everyone's New Year's Eve. However, since people were tired of his behavior, some of the men ended up beating Kevin badly, and he was taken to the hospital. After all the commotion, the only person who rushed to help him was Emily, a new resident in the neighborhood who didn't know Kevin. She called an ambulance and went with him in the vehicle. Kevin ended up spending a week in the hospital, and since no one visited him, Emily went several times, simply because she couldn't stand seeing someone being left alone like that. She had a history of being neglected and knew how much it hurt. Emily had grown up with Linda, a mother who constantly belittled and humiliated her. Linda even bought the same clothes as her daughter, trying to undermine her and steal attention for herself. Linda had a good figure and was in great shape for her age. Always focused on the gym, she maintained a strict diet and did everything to keep her weight low. Emily, on the other hand, was a more easygoing girl who didn't worry as much about her weight and preferred to enjoy life. Always focused on her studies, she graduated from a technical course at 17. To others, she always seemed completely happy, but deep down, she had her scars. Emily had always been neglected by Linda, who was her mother but did not act like one. Emily remembered many things from her childhood, but none of her memories were happy. She was an only child with long, silky, shiny hair, and she always remembered her mother looking at her with a bizarre expression. At first, Emily didn't understand what her mother was feeling, but she soon realized that she was envious of her. One day, Linda simply took Emily to the hair salon. The girl thought her mother was going to dye her hair, since Linda often went to beauty salons and spas for skincare. However, when they arrived, her mother told the hairdressers to cut the girl's hair. Emily told her mother she didn't want to cut her hair, saying, Mommy, I don't want to cut my hair. I like it long because I like making braids. However, Linda grabbed the girl by the arm tightly and said, Obey me, girl. The atmosphere grew tense and Linda forced the girl into the chair. Emily tried to run away, but Linda slapped her. Emily began to cry and even the hairdresser was uncomfortable. He said he could just trim the ends of Emily's hair, but Linda insisted that she wanted the hair cut very short. In the end, the hairdresser did the job after Linda threatened to spread the word that he was an incompetent professional if he didn't. Besides being a controlling mother, she was also someone who didn't hesitate to destroy someone's career if they defied her. Emily cried when she saw her cut hair and was even more upset when she saw her mother adding extensions to her own hair. But that wasn't the only impactful memory she had of her mother. Emily loved a doll that came with various outfits for her to change and also included makeup. She had always loved playing with colors and had a toy that she could spend hours combining different looks. However, one day while she was playing, her mother came over, snatched the doll and the makeup kit from her, and threw the toys in the trash. The mother-daughter relationship only worsened over time. Emily often missed her father, David, who had always been a good man. For years, until Linda was six years old, her father lived with her and her mother. David worked in a toy factory and frequently brought Emily some toys. She used to tell her father that he was like Santa Claus and that other kids envied her. 
Emily loved spending time with her father. She enjoyed when he read stories to her, when they cooked together, and even just watching TV with him. Sometimes, when he was very tired from work, she even liked to just draw next to him while he took a nap on the couch. As a child, Emily didn't realize, but during all the time she spent with her father, Linda watched them with anger. She wouldn't join her husband and daughter. Instead, she would stay in the corners of the house, hiding where they couldn't see her, and grumble to herself, saying, Why do you only pay attention to Emily? David was a calm man, and, just as he was a good father, he was also a good husband, always trying to make Linda happy, but it was a very difficult task. He always invited Linda to spend time with him and Emily, but Linda always refused, saying she wanted to spend time only with him. So, David saved money by working extra hours and managed to make a reservation at the most expensive restaurant in town. He arrived excited, showing her the reservation, but all Linda said was, it better be a really good night, you owe me this. The two went out, and during the entire outing, Linda complained about everything, the place, the food, and the service. When they got home, David had a severe headache and went straight to bed, but Linda followed him, saying, Oh, great, after a night of disappointing me. You're going to leave me talking? David, why are you like this? Emily watched her parents fight and felt very sad, but David continued to treat his daughter very well telling her she was amazing and that he would always take care of her. Linda, however, began making spiteful comments, implying that David only paid attention to Emily. After hours of Linda's complaints, he decided to act. He took Emily to her room, told her to stay there and play, locked the door, and went to the living room. He then said, Linda, what's your problem? She replied, you know very well what it is, David. You don't give me attention anymore. You don't spend time with me and you prefer to be with Emily. David felt his anger take over and shouted, What are you talking about, you crazy woman? She's our daughter. You're jealous of our daughter. Linda kept insisting that it didn't matter, that Emily didn't need as much attention as she did. After long minutes of arguing, with Linda continuing to scream that David should spend more time with her, and only with her, he yelled, Enough! You're unbelievable, Linda. You're letting this strange feeling dominate you. I don't know what to do anymore. He paced back and forth with his hands on his head. David then sat on the couch, sighed with his hands on his head, looked at Linda and said, Enough, Linda, enough, I can't do this anymore. I want a divorce. Upon hearing this, Linda stopped shouting instantly. She then said, What are you saying? No, we're not getting a divorce. She approached David and knelt at his feet. Linda started begging him not to ask for a divorce promising that she would change her behavior. However, David just let her talk and went to his room. He packed some bags while Linda pleaded with him to stay, saying, I'm sorry, David, please don't leave me. Before leaving the house, David went to his daughter's room and said, Sweetheart, Daddy is going to leave tonight, but I'll be back soon to take you to live with me, okay? Emily then went to her father, hugged him, and said, Daddy, please don't go. But he said, It's okay, I'll come back, my love. However, that wasn't what happened. Since David left, Linda began to treat Emily even worse, and she would often say, It's your fault David left, Emily. It's your fault he won't come back. When Emily told her mother that her father had said he would return, Linda would yell, He lied. He's a liar. Linda frequently went out and stayed away for many hours, leaving Emily to fend for herself. Even as a child, Emily matured out of necessity. Fearing burns, she used the microwave to prepare food. Linda was absent, but she didn't let her daughter go hungry, and that was the only thing she managed to do. Since Linda was always out, she stocked the fridge with frozen foods, so Emily only needed to heat up the food. Consequently, the girl's diet became mainly frozen burgers and pasta, leading to a severe nutrient deficiency and weight gain. A month after David left, Linda told Emily they were moving. Emily said she didn't want to go, she liked living there, and the place reminded her of her father. But her mother replied, It doesn't matter what you want, you stubborn girl, you're going where I go. And besides, now that your useless father has abandoned us, we have no choice but to find a cheaper place. Emily didn't like her mother speaking badly of her father, but whenever she said her father wasn't bad, her mother would hit her. The two moved to a neighborhood far from their previous home, 
and Emily felt very unhappy. In the old neighborhood, even though she wasn't very popular or social, she had two friends she enjoyed spending time with. However, in the new neighborhood, she felt very out of place. After a diet of frozen foods, Emily had gained weight and developed many pimples. The kids were unforgiving and started calling her many hurtful names. Emily's life was miserable, and conflicts with her mother became more frequent over time. The girl constantly asked about her father, but all Linda would say is that she didn't know where he was. She said, Your bastard father abandoned us, Emily. He got tired of you. That's why he left. This speech continued until the day the phone rang at their house. Linda answered and listened to the person on the other end for a few minutes. Linda then said, I understand. Thank you for letting me know. Goodbye. Emily asked her mother, Mom, was that daddy? Linda, serious, sat in a chair and asked Emily for a glass of water. After Emily brought it, Linda took a sip and said, David won't be coming back, Emily. The girl asked why, and her mother replied, He had a heart attack. He's dead. Weeks went by, and Emily, in denial, couldn't get over her father's death. Linda's attitude didn't help at all. She didn't try to comfort her daughter and didn't even seem to care about the tragedy that had occurred. But at least at school, one person began to support Emily. A classmate approached her. Ethan was a Japanese immigrant student, and since he had arrived at school, some mean kids had made nasty jokes about him. Ethan started to get close to Emily because they both suffered from constant bullying and had no support at home. Both Emily's mother and Ethan's parents didn't protect their children and merely told them they needed to learn to defend themselves. Despite this, even though they bonded because they found in each other a refuge from constant humiliation, they began to like each other. They enjoyed each other's company and developed a deep affection for one another. Over time, the only reason Emily looked forward to going to school was Ethan. However, time passed, and upon finishing 8th grade, Ethan changed schools. Years went by, and unable to stand being at home, Emily began working at 13. She went to a city fair and worked at a pastel stand. It was a tough job, but it was better than staying at home. As she got older, she managed to rent a place, moved out, and that was when she witnessed Kevin being attacked. A week later, Kevin had woken up and was happy to learn that Emily was the only one who had come to care for him. He started visiting Emily regularly, giving her gifts and asking her out. Emily had always been very shy, and when he asked her to be his girlfriend, she ended up accepting. Emily and Kevin started dating, but Kevin didn't change his behavior and continued having extramarital affairs. Emily believed that she might have a good future with Kevin, but things worsened when Linda came to visit her. Emily had not seen her mother for years, and when she saw her at the door, she told her to leave. However, Linda told her daughter that she was there to make things right. Linda came in, and while talking to her daughter, she expressed her remorse and apologized. Emily forgave her mother, even though she was still very hurt. Linda told her daughter that she needed a place to stay because she was homeless, and Emily agreed to let her stay at her house. For a month, Linda seemed to have changed. She helped Emily with daily tasks, tidying the house, and preparing meals since Emily came home tired from work. For a while, they even talked a lot. Linda told her daughter she looked beautiful and asked how she had managed to lose weight. Emily explained, Well, Mom, when I was a child, I only ate frozen foods. Now, as an adult, I've changed my diet. I lost weight, but more importantly, my health has greatly improved. Linda looked at her daughter and said, Wow. You're so confident, sweetie, and so beautiful, and you found a great boyfriend too. Everything continued well. Linda helped around the house, and Kevin was a loving boyfriend. Things were going so well that when he proposed to Emily, she accepted, and they got engaged. For a long time, Emily felt empty. The way her mother had treated her was very hurtful, like a hole in her chest. After all, she had left her mother's house and had never been sought out by her. But at that moment, she felt that her mother had truly changed and that, in addition, she had found a good man to marry. Emily was so excited that one day, when she got off work early, she bought a cake and decided to surprise Kevin. As she walked home, looking at the beautiful engagement ring he had given her, she smiled, eager to get there. However, 
When she entered the house, her smile vanished. She caught her mother and her fiancé in the act. That was the last straw. They even tried to hide, but Emily started yelling, hurling all the insults she could remember at her fiancé, tearing the ring from his finger, making it clear that the engagement was over. She kicked him out, and he left with his head down. But she directed her anger more at her mother, shouting, You're a narcissistic and abusive mother. My therapist told me that. You belittle me to feel better about yourself. You're a terrible person, but that's enough. I don't need either of you. Linda begged to stay, but Emily pushed her outside. Once outside, Linda said, Fine, I'll leave, but sweetheart, do you want to know something? Your father didn't die. Elite. Linda said this to hurt her daughter, but Emily was stronger by then. After seeing a therapist, she understood that the blame was not hers but Linda's. Instead of feeling responsible, Emily started searching for her father online. Now that she was living alone again, she realized she had never really loved Kevin and was better off without him. After two weeks, she finally found her father online, but she also found someone else special, Ethan. Emily couldn't believe it. She arranged to meet her father and discovered that Linda had obtained a protective order against him, claiming he was an abusive father and husband. After that, she moved away, and he never knew where they were living. But for Emily, the past didn't matter. She just wanted to enjoy life with her father and make up for lost time. Determined not to waste any more time, she also contacted Ethan. When they reunited, it was as if they had never been apart. With Ethan and her father in her life, Emily finally felt completely happy. She couldn't believe she had found her two loves again. A year later, Emily and Ethan got married, and David helped with the wedding. To avoid Linda's attempts to contact them, Emily, Ethan, and David moved to another state and managed to live in peace. The couple soon had children, adopted two dogs, and David frequently visited them. Ethan had become a very successful businessman, so they lived a peaceful life. Every day, when she woke up and saw Ethan beside her and their children sleeping in the next room, Emily would make a cup of tea and play with their dogs. After an hour, they would all gather for breakfast, and amid conversations and laughter, she would feel emotional, grateful for her chance to be happy. And looking at Ethan, she could see he felt the same. Have you ever been attracted to mothers-in-law? Tell us in the comments. If you enjoyed this gripping story, Please give a like on this video and share it with your friends. And this other video appearing on your screen now promises to be equally provocative and will certainly lead you to new emotions. Subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell to know whenever we release new videos. See you next time.